Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about my favorite YA fantasy books. So the YA genre does have a special place in my heart. It's one of the genres that really got me into reading and I do have some YA fantasy book favorites that I wanted to talk about today. I chose five book series to talk about today and these series are in no particular order and let's just get right to the first one which is The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. So the first book in this series is Cinder. Each book in this YA fantasy sci-fi series has its own fairy tale retelling. Book one is a retelling of Cinderella. Then we also have Little Red Riding Hood, Sleeping Beauty, and Rapunzel retellings. I really like the twist that Marissa Meyer does bring. In the first book, we're introduced to Cinder and she is a half a cyborg mechanic living in New Beijing. Unfortunately, her stepmother blames Cinder for her stepsister's illness, which doesn't make sense, but... <laughs> Once Cinder's life becomes entangled with Prince Kai's, she is thrown into the world of politics and being in the center of a possible war. When I was first reading the series, I remember that the characters were absolutely fantastic, the action was non-stop, and even though Cinder is the typical strong female protagonist, she really does have redeeming qualities and she will do anything to protect her little sister. Given that there is the sci-fi aspect to this fantasy series, we have a outer space moon colony that's a potential threat to Earth. There is a deadly plague in the air and also forbidden love. With some YA fantasy series, including the Lunar Chronicles, the plot points can be somewhat predictable, but for this particular series, the villains really do keep you entertained throughout as well. Next up on my favorites list is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. So far, there are only two books out of the three books in this trilogy that are released, and when I read them back to back, Legendborn and Bloodmarked, my life was just taken over by this uh, series. <laughs> This is a YA fantasy series with dark academia, a King Arthur retelling, and black girl magic. I absolutely love this series so far, but I'm really excited to see what book 3 has in store for us. We're following 16-year-old Brie who has joined an early college program and on the first night on campus, she witnesses a magical flying demon attack and only she saw it. She quickly finds out that there is a secret society of students named Legendborn who have magical powers and are fighting against demons. Once Bree suspects that there is a connection between the Legendborn society and her mother's death, she will do anything to join them and get some answers. I love the university setting and how Bree is placed in the middle of a centuries year old war and she has more connections to this than she first realizes. There's also non-stop action, there is a wonderful magical system, and the romances are very addicting to read about. This book does read quite quickly and with all those aspects, you just keep on turning the pages. Brie is a very headstrong character, she's very stubborn, and she's entering a society and a world that has very rigid rules and I love watching her break them with like a smile and grin on her face. It's very entertaining to read about but this book also does cover um, themes of colonialism, slavery, racism, grief, and healing from that grief. Overall, I do really highly recommend this one if you're looking for something that has like dark academia and demon hunting, monster hunting, and really nice romances. Next up, we have a YA dystopian fantasy series and this is Scythe by Neil Shusterman. really love Neil Shusterman's writing and his dystopian world. They're so realistic and kind of scary to think about that it might actually happen. I also know that this isn't a fantasy series like by classical definition, but I'm categorizing it as fantasy, sci-fi, dystopian, all of that. In this book's world, the world is perfect. There's no hunger, there's no more disease, there's no war, and there's also no more death. So humans are essentially immortal. However, there is a means of population control, and this is done through people who are known as scythes and they are ordered to kill people in order to bring down the population. And they are the only people that are granted the permission to kill others. Sounds very messed up, and it is. We are mainly following two main characters, Sintra and Rowan. So they are chosen as Scythe 
apprentices and they are then learning about the art of killing and how there's a lot more secrets to this world than they both know. Both are quite reluctant to be chosen as apprentices but it's very interesting to see how each character's journey um, develops throughout the series. This book also does dive into politics and how there is different nations around this world that are trying to get more power and also how death is not seen as something scary anymore because it's then cured. So it's a very interesting concept and I very much enjoyed my time reading this one. There is uh, three books in the series but it does read very quickly. Next we have a book series that I would say is quite unique and this is The Mirror Visitors Quartet by Christelle Dabble. So this one is originally written in French but it is translated to English and I, I would say like some of the English translation does kind of give off a weird pacing at first but then you quickly get used to it. But I really do think that the French to English translation doesn't really take away from the unique writing style that this author has and it really adds to the cool concepts in this book. In book one, it's called A Winter's Promise. We are set on a world that has had a cataclysmic event known as the rupture and this is where the earth has been broken up into chunks and they are now floating cities and countries known as arcs. Our protagonist is Ophelia and she lives on an arc where the people there have a magical ability that allows them to, to read objects history and she is a really good reader. However, once Ophelia finds herself in an arranged engagement to Thorn, who is a man who lives on another arc known as Pole, she is whisked away to Pole and on this new arc is very very different from her home arc. Pole is a very cold and vicious place and quite deadly not only with its weather but with its people. Ophelia finds herself being a pawn in their political games and she doesn't really like that. The series does have four books but our characters really are the shining stars. With Ophelia and Thorn, I really like how they are opposites to each other. Ophelia, she is described as being awkward, short, and clumsy. She also has a magical scarf that's very protective of her and she has the unique ability to travel through mirrors on Thorn's end, he is described as lanky, cold, and tall, and quite aloof, and he really has no interest in this marriage arrangement with Ophelia. Ophelia and Thorn's relationship is quite rocky, but I really did like their development throughout the entire series. There are so many mysteries in this world that are really fun to discover about unique characters as well that you wouldn't assume that would pop up, but I really enjoyed reading the series. The world building is very well done and it really does speak on the unexpected strengths you may find in people. Overall, I really had a fun time enjoying this unique world in book series. Last but not least on my favorite list for why fantasy series is the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. I do personally categorize this as a why fantasy but then um, in later books, this is a seven book series, in the later books there are more mature scenes. So I think this is a weird transitionary book into YA to adult, but I'm categorizing it as YA. A quick summary of the first book, Throne of Glass, we are following an assassin known as Selena Serodothian. She has entered into a competition to become the king's champion. Then we have the Crown Prince Dorian and his captain of the guard, Kale, who are both very interested in Selena. And there are many events that go down and there is a larger evil at play here as well. The rest of the books in the series really do evolve way off from book one. We have witches, fae, monsters, and impending wars. There's a lot going on. In each book, we do have a growing cast of characters. There is a large cast of characters by book seven. Although we have many different point of views, our main character is obviously still Selena. Fun to discover her journey as well as her friends and family. With Sarah J Maas, I do think her strongest writing point is about her character's journey and the growth journey that they go on as well as the romances and relationships that she has. Not only on the romance end, but with friendships. Personally, I do admit that I am a bit biased with the series. I really enjoyed it. 
and there are a lot of themes such as healing from trauma, fighting against great evils, and struggling power dynamics in politics and within society. Although this series is very big on the chosen one trope, um, this entire world is very easy to get lost and immersed in. Those were all the five YA book series that I want to share today that are my favorites, but I did want to maybe consider my future of a YA fantasy reading. For now, I could only think about a few book series I have not read. One of the big ones that I have not read and is a YA fantasy series is Harry Potter. I have not read the series. I don't know why. I think I just avoided it because it was too popular and I think I was trying to be like a cool kid at that young age. But <laughs> I watched the movies. I really think the Harry Potter world is really fun, but it may be some time before I even get to the books. Another series that comes to mind, I have it right here, and it is the Children of Blood and Bone series by Tomi Ediemi, and the second book I have is um, Children of Virtue and Vengeance. So these two books, I need to do a reread of the first one, I need to get to the second one, but I know the third one is releasing later on this fall. Other than Harry Potter and Children of the Blood and Bone, I can't really think of any other prominent YA series that really stick on in my mind to like read immediately. But if there is a YA fantasy book series that I did not mention in this video, comment down below if I should go pick that up or if I may be interested in that. Comment all the books down below. And with that, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I also hope you can give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!